Hi, uh, my name is Benjamin Puro. I'm a neuro-oncologist physician scientist at the University of Virginia. Uh, I'm in the neurology department and also in the uh, cancer center here. At, I'm very happy today to talk to you about a recent paper on the statins and uh, that their primary mode of action uh, against cancer cells is through uh, TGF-beta uh, inhibition. So uh, to give you a little background on what got us into this, we, uh, we're a neuro-oncology lab. As I mentioned, I'm a neuro-oncologist and uh, you know, we're always uh, interested interested in finding new targets, new drugs, but we're also very interested in repurposing existing drugs and, and um, finding better ways to apply uh, existing drugs, uh, new mechanisms and combinations uh, with drugs involving repurposing or rescuing uh, drugs that have been abandoned. This particular research got started in a, in a somewhat unusual way, I think. So there's a, there's a fascinating and underused database um, available online called CellMiner, and uh, it's run by uh, the NIH, the National Institutes of Health, and uh, makes available very detailed profiling of the NCI 60 cell line and uh, all the really it's 59 cell lines and one's probably duplicate. But at any rate, the cell minor database involves or makes available data with gene expression profiling, microRNA expression profiling. More recently, they've added a lot more data with uh, mutations and um, other characterization of these cell lines. But the thing that I think is most exciting is that they've looked at drug sensitivity with a library of over 20,000 compounds. Um, and cell minor uh, allows you to do very facile searches for correlations and patterns in these data, you know, with this extensive profiling of the 60-ish cell lines and the NCI cancer cell lines and the NCI 60. So one of the interesting ways to use this database, I think, is to look for correlations in gene expression versus drug sensitivity. Uh, and to be somewhat targeted about that, one of the things I tried to do was uh, look at expression of established target genes for given pathways, and then and look for some patterns in drug sensitivity. Um, and one of the pathways that I did this for is the TGF-beta pathway, um, which is uh, well known and well studied in oncology. It's, uh, it's an inflammatory pathway, often works in partnership or overlapping with NF-kappa B pathway, NF-kappa B signaling. But uh, and TGF-beta is involved in um, a lot of inflammatory processes, fibrosis, for example, and drives a whole lot of downstream signaling. In normal cells, it, it acts more like a tumor suppressor, but um, it's well known as a driver in many, many cancers, or at least a contributor to many, many cancers. Driver, I would say, is less well established generally in cancer, but it also has uh, some interesting pro-cancer effects, not just at the level of the cancer cells themselves, but also with the microenvironment. It's powerfully immunosuppressive, so uh, so there's a lot of interest in targeting TGF-beta, but we don't yet have any good TGF-beta inhibitors in the clinic. There are some drugs dedicated TGF-beta uh, inhibitors that are in the pipeline, um, but there's strong interest in, in getting drugs now uh, to the clinic to, to block this TGF-beta signaling pathway uh, for a number of cancers, and glioblastoma brain cancer, which is our main focus, is among those, but more broadly, this is true across lots of different cancers. So using the cell minor database, I tried to get a sense of whether any existing drugs, known drugs, you know, might have some relevance for the TGF-beta pathway. And I did this in the manner I said. I sort of looked at expression of known TGF-beta to target genes and sort of used high expression of those genes as a surrogate for high TGF-beta activity. And then looked for any drug correlations, you know, are there drugs that seem to be more active against cancer lines that, that seem to have high TGF-beta activity, high expression of these known TGF-beta target genes whose expression is driven uh, by TGF-beta activity and signaling. And using a couple of uh, good TGF-beta target genes, um, one is called uh, Serpin E1, um, there's another one called Zixin. Those are two, uh, I think, sort of classic and strong TGF-beta targets that we used. And looking at their expression, sort of the, the cancer cell lines that had the high expression, these TGF-beta target genes were much more sensitive, if you looked at the drug sensitivities, to a class of drugs called the statins. And the statins are used ubiquitously out in the clinic. There are a host of these approved, FDA-approved statin drugs, uh, which have been out there for decades as cholesterol-lowering drugs. These enzymes inhibit potently 
um, an enzyme called HMG-CoA reductase, which is involved in cholesterol synthesis in our bodies. So, so these statins have been used ubiquitously for, for ages. They're, you know, they're among the most highly prescribed drugs in the whole world as cholesterol-lowering uh, agents. So, but, you know, we, we made this interesting finding with cell minor that cancer cell lines with seemingly high TGF-beta activity using expression of these TGF-beta targets as a surrogate marker, you know, all the, all the statins that were in the library seemed to carve Late. It was sort of a, an amazing degree of correlation. We did some statistics on uh, to get p-values to, to sort of characterize this, uh, how significant these correlations were, and so we got the most ridiculous p-values I've ever seen anywhere. You know, things like 10 to the minus 20. You know, I mean, so we got fairly absurd correlations of statin sensitivity with expression in cancer lines of TGF beta target genes. So naturally, we wanted to follow this up, and and uh, sort of gave us the idea that well, firstly, that the statins, you know were more active against cancer lines with high TGF beta. That in itself is interesting, but it also suggested to us, well, maybe that's because statins uh, actually inhibit TGF beta. Now, the role of the statins in oncology has been kind of a confusing one. There are some interesting epidemiologic studies in different cancers suggesting that there may be better survival patients with certain cancers uh, when they're on statins. There are a few papers in the opposite direction that, you know, patients on statins tend to do a little worse or that those cancers are a little more common in patients on statins. So, but it's been really kind of a mess, and, and people have not had a good sense of how the statins might plug into to oncology. There have been a number of papers suggesting that the statins have some direct activity against cancer cells, and a few different mechanisms have been posited for that. So it's been it's been thought that the statins might do some modest inhibition of this NF kappa B pathway, um, which is sort of a sister pathway to TGF beta, but not a lot of attention was, was given to that, and, and um, statins don't seem to be particularly good against NF-kappa B, actually. The statins do act uh, to some degree as sort of prenylation inhibitors by blocking availability of uh, upstream substrates for crenelation, but, uh, but you know, there really wasn't a solid sense in the cancer literature of what the statins might be doing against cancer cells, and, you know, is there sort of a primary mechanism for that? So we started digging into the statins as potential TGF-beta inhibitors, and uh, so, so one of the things we looked at was whether, you know, just tried to confirm whether cancer cell lines that had higher TGF-beta activity were indeed more sensitive to the statins, and uh, and we did see, you know, we did confirm that. We did see correlations that uh, looking at, with um, glioblastoma or GBM cell lines that <clears throat> higher activity, higher TGF-beta activity did correlate with um, sensitivity to the statins. And we focus mostly on simvastatin in our work, It's uh, or Zocor is the trade name. This is uh, a widely used statin. Um, it's the one that probably, based on uh, past research, has the best blood-brain barrier penetration, so gets into the brain the best. So for our purposes, you know, with a focus on glioblastoma, we were interested in, in uh, focusing on simvastatin, but we showed the same things with other statins. So this was not at all specific to uh, just simvastatin. So we did show a correlation in some more cell lines of higher TGF-beta activity to statin sensitivity. And we looked at TGF-beta activity in a couple of ways. We, we, in the paper, used a whole lot, a well-established uh, reporter plasmid that uses luciferase expression driven by uh, SMAD3 binding elements as a good surrogate reporter for TGF-beta activity. And we used that uh, reagent throughout the paper, as well as uh, looking at expression of, of target genes like serpine one and Zixin. So, uh, so that was one of the things we showed was confirming that correlation. You know, along those lines, we also showed that you could manipulate the level of TGF beta activity in these cells and, and affect their sensitivity to the statins. So, for example, if you gave exogenous TGF beta, it's bumped up the level of TGF beta activity, you actually sensitized them to the statins. So we thought that was a nice um, bit of support showing that TGF beta activity was sort of a controller for how sensitive these cancer cells were to the statins. And I should mention that we mostly focused on GBM in the paper, but we did um, show the same basic principles for other cancers as well. So we think this is broadly applicable across cancer, and that TGF-beta activity does sort of regulate how sensitive cancer cells are to the statins. 
Um, now, we wanted to, you know, check, too, as I said, whether the statins could actually uh, inhibit TGF-beta themselves. And we found that they were actually quite potent TGF-beta inhibitors. And importantly, this was at clinically achievable levels, so, um, or, you know, physiologically relevant concentrations of, of the statins. So, for example, simvastatin, with sort of standard dosing, you know, in a patient, you can use 20 or 40 milligrams a day of simvastatin uh, in, a, in a patient, uh, Zocor, blood levels can reach something like, um, 700 uh, nanomolar, potentially 500, 700 nanomolar. Um, and we did see activity of the statins against TGF-beta in concentrations of, uh, uh, at that range. Um, now, one important thing to mention, though, is that there was some variability in how sensitive different um, cancer cell lines were to the statins. Um, so looking at, um, you know, that reporter plasmid that I mentioned and, and downstream targets of TGF-beta, we, uh, we saw that the statins were able to to potently and strongly reduce TGF-beta activity, but the concentrations at which that happened differed across different cell lines. And we noted that cell lines that tended to be a little more mesenchymal in their phenotype, and you'll see that mesenchymal phenotype pop up in all kinds of cancers. There's the so-called epithelial to mesenchymal transition, EMT, and, uh, you know, that's a, that's a major issue in um, lots of different epithelial cancers, you know, breast, lung, prostate, etc. You know, they uh, tend to have an epithelial phenotype most of the time, but this EMT can occur, drive them to a more mesenchymal phenotype. TGF-beta, um, fittingly, is known as one of the major drivers of EMT in lots of cancers. So, um, so it kind of makes sense that the more mesenchymal cancers uh, across all different cancers, you know, uh, and this includes GBM, you know, it, it makes sense that, that the more mesenchymal ones might have greater TGF-beta activity and dependency. And we found that those cell lines tended to be sensitive to uh, the statins at lower concentrations and typically at more physiologically relevant concentrations. So, you know, mechanistically, we did come up with a mechanism by which the statins inhibited TGF-beta. That being said, there may be other mechanisms out there. You know, basically for that mechanism, we sort of put two and two together uh, about some things that were in the literature already. You know, before our paper, there really hadn't been papers sort of uh, that had shown what we found that that the statins were strong TGF beta inhibitors in cancer cells, uh, and that in fact it was sort of their primary mechanism. There were some hints in the literature that T that statins might be affecting some downstream mediators of TGF beta, for example. Uh, but basically, everything we showed was was new. However, the mechanism was a bit easy based on some prior things that had been shown. There was a phosphorylation of SMAD3, which is a, a, a critical TGF-beta mediator, and we found that the statins affected the enzymes that, that did this phosphorylation and, and therefore was affecting SMAD3 activity. So we think we have sort of a, a, a reasonable mechanism to explain how statins affect TGF-beta activity. But there are, you know, potentially other plausible things that might be further contributing to, to statins effects on TGF beta activity. You know, one interesting thing is that, you know, we did look at a couple of commercially available TGF beta inhibitors, um, including one drug that is in clinical trials as a TGF beta inhibitor. And we were a bit shocked to see that the statins actually did very well against the dedicated TGF beta uh, inhibitors when they were compared for potency and, and uh, level of TGF beta inhibition. Um, in fact, the statins tended to outperform the TGF, the dedicated TGF beta inhibitors in the pipeline. Now, statins are, of course, dirty drugs. They do other things. They, they lower cholesterol. You get some crenellation inhibition. And by themselves, you know, we're not really advocating for the statins as solo cancer therapy. But, you know, knowing that they're uh, more active against cancer cell lines with higher TGF-beta activity, uh, we think is very important. And we think they're sort of particularly relevant against mesenchymal cancer cell lines. There is one paper that uh, also alludes to this in the literature about, you know, maybe the statins being more relevant for mesenchymal uh, cancer lines. And, and, you know, we think we have a good explanation for this with the TGF-beta inhibition by the statins. You know, in terms of where do we go from here going forward, well, we think it's very important to know that the statins are strong TGF-beta inhibitors. We, we saw that it wasn't just in normal cancer cancer cells or normal liver seem to show signs of TGF-beta inhibition as well. So we think the implications are potentially pretty broad. We think that this can really help guide combination therapies of statins plus other drugs. You know, there are certain other drugs where one of the rapid resistance mechanisms is an EMT, and it may often be TGF-beta-driven. So sort of adding a statin to one of those drugs, we might block that resistance mechanism.
mechanism. So we're, we've been working now with combination therapies of statins plus other drugs. And um, there are a lot of great um, synergistic uh, interactions of statins plus other, other agents. And, um, you know, and, and we think that the TGF-beta inhibition by the statins is really the, the critical mechanism there. And we think this may be important in other settings too. Um, I mean, there have been hints that the statins may somewhat prolong lifespan and, uh, and do some other exciting things, you know. I mean, obviously, they're used as cholesterol-lowering drugs. There have been hints of anti-inflammatory activity. But we think inhibiting TGF-beta might explain a bunch of the beneficial activity of the statins, actually. Some of their anti-fibrotic activity, TGF-beta is a big driver of fibrosis. You know, in inflammation, TGF-beta is a major, major uh, mediator of inflammation. So we think that showing that the statins are potent TGF-beta inhibitors, you know, will help guide their use uh, in drug combinations against cancer, and uh, but also have significant implications out side of cancer, you know, and, and there's uh, there's all this interest in, you know, dedicated TGF-beta inhibitors and clinical trials being done, but we've got these really quite good TGF-beta inhibitors already in the clinic with the statin. So, uh, so we're excited about, uh, you know, some of the directions moving forward and, and some of the ways that this can be used in oncology and uh, outside as well.